uh, you have mentioned uh, the status status of Transnistria, yeah, and it's the very crucial, probably the most dramatic problem of Moldova for years, and maybe for years to come. Right. What uh, what is your political group? What is your political new political party? approach to transition problem and what is the coalition approach to transition problem who you should speak to uh, to even smirnov to igor smirnov who is uh, the leader of of transnistria or uh, as mr gimpo told me recently to straightly to russia because he thinks russia is responsible for that conflict from the very big beginning i would uh, underline a couple of principles for a Transnistrian problem uh, settlement. Firstly, Democratic Party and I believe uh, uh, the coalition as a whole, we will not accept, uh, let's say, a military way for settling that, this problem. We have not accepted that idea and we we'll, are not going to accept that idea in the future. The only way for uh, solving the problem is the peaceful way the way of uh, negotiations. Yes, we understand that this way is not an easy one. Difficult negotiations again, but with no alternatives, for sure. Uh, secondly, those negotiations uh, should be developed in the existing frame, a large one, five plus, plus two, because uh, from my personal point of view, it is a rather balanced uh, format uh, that could bring uh, in the future as well, added value from the very practical point of view. Uh, third one, we believe that uh, uh, the existing uh, uh, peacekeeping, the format, the existing format of the peace peacekeeping mission uh, could be transformed uh, because we don't expect uh, for certain military threats from Tiraspol yeah, towards Kishinev, uh, nor military threats from Kishinev to Tiraspol. Uh, I think uh, in uh, building up trust and uh, building up bridges between the two banks of uh, Nistro, that mission uh, could be transformed in, uh, into a mission, uh, international mission of uh, civil observers. It could be a very good idea yeah, for uh, diminishing this uh, tension. Know, psychological, uh, tension, psychological pressure. Now, who should be the partner? Uh, as I said, this kind of political talks, political dialogue, political negotiations is not an easy one. And I believe that we'll need to use all the partners, I mean to use uh, or to develop dialogue with everybody, with Tiraspo, with Russia Federation, with all the partners within 5 plus 2, even more. Uh, a dialogue uh, at the level of civil society, people-to-people -people mm -hmm. contacts from both uh, banks of uh, uh, Nistro uh, in order to achieve uh, uh, a kind of um, um, better understanding, yeah? Again, to build up bridges at different levels uh, here within Moldova or going uh, through the assistance uh, of our international partners uh, from the very practical point of view, if we, uh, we are oriented not only towards a process just because of the process, mm -hmm. but if uh, we are treating that process as a very important one in achieving certain practical results, we need to use all the levels, all the possibilities, all the tools uh, to move step by step in the direction of this problem settlement. Mm -hmm. And you have been cooperating with Mr. Voronin for quite a while. What do you think about him personally? You know, as every person, uh, every person has positive, I mean, qualities, has certain negative qualities. He's a human being. Yeah, and obviously... That's for sure. <laughs> this for sure. Uh, and obviously, uh, like uh, anybody else, he has... Uh, uh, the same positive and negative uh, qualities. What could I say at the very general level? Uh, he's a strong person, strong politician, and uh, this is rec recognized by everybody. On the other hand, I would uh, underline that uh, he's a contradictorial 
person, you know, uh, in the very large mm -hmm. sense of this uh, uh, definition. And what do, how do you like the, um, the direction he led Moldova into? Mr. Foran, in Again, the, the same situation during uh, the past eight years. Uh, there were positive achievements on one hand. Uh, in the meantime, uh, during those eight years, a lot of problems have been generated and created. And I believe that uh, those problems, uh, they could be avoided, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, those problems uh, uh, were created, have not been avoided, and this is the negative part of uh, this uh, era of eight years of the governance of the Communist Party uh, of Moldova. For you to become the president, uh, you need most probable scenario is when you will speak to your former colleagues and you will ask or invite eight of them to your party uh, and then you, uh, all of a sudden the coalition would have the majority the the, the, the union for european integration yeah. how probable is this scenario and how successful you could be in in this step you know again rhetoric uh, rhetoric question um, from the very beginning I declared that the Democratic Party, me personally, uh, I'm completely against to use certain, you know, hidden methods uh, for making certain pressures, yeah, or to try to corrupt somebody. This is not my approach, and this is not the approach of the Democratic Party, because this kind of approach in the past, sometimes was applied by the representatives of the Communist Party yes. and I would not like to look like them in such a situation. I declared many, many times and you know uh, those declarations uh, were very serious ones. Uh, I had this strong feeling that in Moldova we need to, to get uh, another level of political culture, to apply uh, again, uh, the most interesting, most important standards of political life, I mean European standards. Uh, the political class should, uh, should get another level of uh, political activity and political culture. This is why uh, me personally, my colleagues, will try to be very convincing in developing the dialogue with uh, the Communist Party and the management body, with uh, the members of that party, that uh, out of different contradictions and uh, certain personal problems. Uh, we have to think about the uh, destiny of this country. And the situation in Moldova is extremely difficult, not only from the political point of view, but also from the economic point of view. We have uh, a lot of negative, very bad effects of the economic, uh, international economic uh, crisis affecting our country as a small economy, export-oriented, uh, very vulnerable. This is why we need to find out a balanced political solution in order to avoid anticipated parliamentary elections that could be a catastrophe for Moldova as a country, as economic system, as social system. Uh, also, we have a very interesting precedent. Precedent created a case created in 2005. More or less the same situation. The Communist Party, 56 seats. Uh, the opposition party is 45. Mm -hmm. Right now we have uh, 53, 48, very close, mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, uh, while discussing by that time to vote or not the candidate, um, the candidature of Mr. Voronin for the post of the president of the country, all other political uh, players, they didn't require, uh, they didn't request um, certain you know, posts, yeah? Uh, official positions within the government, etc., etc. Uh, because those political parties, they showed a responsibility for the stable political situation in Moldova, a responsibility for the future of that country, for the integration process, voting Mr. Voronin without institutional claims.